ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بال ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن اتبع سنته الى يوم الدين اما بعد Brothers and sisters, the reality of our life is that it fluctuates between extreme states of difficulty and then extreme states of ease. And I don't think any one of us can deny that that is a reality. Things are never always, always good, nor are things ever always bad. And if that is a part of our life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator, who put us in this situation. He subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us an instruction, gave us a guide as to how do we live between these fluctuations. And actually, the reality is that he subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our salah, in Surah Al-Fatiha rather, that we say 17 times a day at minimum, a reminder and a guide for us. So when every time we start every raka'ah, we say, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. And something that a sister pointed out to me earlier this week is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, guide us to the straight path. Allah mentions it as a path, not a destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say in Surah Al-Fatiha, Oh Allah, allow us to reach Jannah. Oh Allah, forgive us of our sins or anything. He says, guide us to the straight path. And that is indicative of the fact that our entire lives, while Jannah is very important, is really primarily focused on the journey. And having guidance in that path, being upon the path that is correct and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is what is primal and most important. And so when we're thinking about life as a journey and the fact that we are all on a path trying to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, trying to remove the evils of our lower selves so that we can be people deserving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and then the destination of Jannah, we always look for examples. As human beings, it's very easy for us if we have an example to know how to enact this. Undoubtedly, our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam is an example for us that we constantly take from. That is a source that we exhaust and we know how to live our lives as Muslims. But also we have another example, many others. But another that we're going to highlight and talk about today is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Ibrahim. Now we talked about Sayyidina Ibrahim and his life a few weeks back in the month of Dhul Hijjah. We talked about how Sayyidina Ibrahim, his entire life was filled with da'wah, but more importantly in devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a very young age, he started with his smallest social circle, his father, his family. And after exhausting that circle, he went to the circle that was a little bit bigger than him, his tribe and his people. After exhausting that, he went to, a little bit larger than that, the leader of his people, which ended up with him receiving capital punishment, being thrown into a fire, and then expatriation, being kicked out of the city. After that, he migrated to Egypt, dealt with a tyrannical ruler there. After being blessed with a newborn son, had to leave his son and wife in Mecca, now known as Mecca. Then he's reunited with them after having been separated for many years. And he starts to build the foundations of what we have today as the Kaaba. And life has constantly been changing for him, ups and downs, calling his family capital punishment, expatriation, kicked out of the city. Hope for a new place, tyrannical ruler, blessed with a wife given a wife and a new son that he'd been praying for for 80 some years, then being commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave them in a dissolute situation. Being reunited with them, 
given the commandment when his son had reached the age of maturity to slaughter him. Ups and downs, good and bad, this fluctuation was constantly throughout his life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمُ And when his Lord said to him, devote yourself. قَالْ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ when Allah commanded Ibrahim at this elderly age to devote himself, devote himself to me rather, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim immediately responded with, I have devoted myself to the Lord of all worlds. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell his prophet, who had lived an entire life of devotion, to recommit himself? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that he is given up everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. His family, his people, his child, everything for Allah. And at an elderly age, why would he re-tell him to redevote himself? There are many benefits we can take for that. But first and foremost, that in our fluctuation in life, when things become good and things become evil, we constantly have to renew our devotion and renew our intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only that, that our devotion at this time does not suffice us for the things that have happened before and the things that will come. We constantly have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consciously and in with a meaningful and mindfulness, guide me to the straight path. And as we know, our salah doesn't stop when we reach a certain age. It's not like we don't have to, in our lives we can check off a box and now salah is not obligatory. This is something we have to constantly say 17 times a day from the time we wake up and to the end, later part of the night. Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his prophet, devote yourself to me, Allah is talking about in every single part of life. And this devotion is in both good times and in ease. Ibrahim salam at this point in his life was at a time of immense ease. He had been reunited with his family. He would established the foundations for the Kaaba. He now has his son and they're growing up together. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded him now, when things are easy, this is when you devote yourself as well. This is when you buckle down and you try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, devote yourself. But in the answer of Ibrahim and then what he followingly did, are many more lessons for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, devote yourself to me, and he immediately responded with, Aslam to li rabbil alameen. I have demoted my I have devoted myself to the Lord of all the worlds. Ibrahim alayhi salam was able to see beyond himself. He was able to be in a, sta a state of immense humility to understand that things are much larger than himself. He knew alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the controller of all things. He knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him, the, him this commandment is Rabbil Alameen. And in knowing that, he didn't suffice with that alone. He didn't just devote himself in his own individual life. He then proceeded to command his family. He commanded his sons to also be devoted to this life of righteousness this life of monotheism. And we can learn from that that we aren't as human beings on this path by ourselves. As Muslims, we do not live in isolation. And even academics, they'll say that a healthy sense of theological life is not by itself. It can't function alone. We need as human beings a community to support ourselves. So Ibrahim now establishing a new city, now being a different wavelength, a different mode of life than he was before. Not just a prophet calling his people, or his family rather. Not just devoting himself to raising his children and his family. Now he's a leader of people. He has to commit himself. And so us, brothers and sisters, when we're living our lives, we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing and how will my actions affect the larger community. 
What can I do to better myself, my family, and then the larger social structure that Ibrahim السلام, was constantly devoted to from the time of youth till elderly age. But also, we have to understand where was Ibrahim at this time? Not only was he in Mecca, but he was a senior. What usually happens culturally, at least for us today, when our seniors become elderly in age? This is usually when we think that we're going to relax. Things are theoretically supposed to be easy. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read Quran. I'm going to put the things in theoretical or figurative cruise control, and that's going to be it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, devote yourself. So even when we think we're supposed to be in a time of raha, even when we think we're supposed to be in a time of ease, even then we're supposed to devote ourselves. Even when we are in a time where it's expected for us to sit back and relax and live a life of perhaps hermitude or live a life of relaxation, even then we have to be devoted to la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is how we have to live our lives. But Ibrahim السلام, he knew this. And this is why immediately after that, he called his children. Ibrahim had insight and forward thinking and wisdom that deemed him truly worthy of being Khalilullah. Ibrahim السلام, knew that he was establishing a city. He knew that he was raising children in a family. So immediately after doing this, he called his children. And the style, the way in which he raised his family continued on for many years. So much so that the ayah continues on to say, Yaqub, his grandson, called his children. This was how much and how dedicated, how sincere Ibrahim السلام, was. When he had the opportunity to be in his child's life, to be after living and giving up so much by the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was ready and able to be a prophet, he fully committed himself. So much so, not only did he have righteous children, we know he had Ismail and Ishaq, Ishmael and Isaac, but his grandchildren, Yaqub, and then his great-grandson, Yusuf, Joseph, alayhim salatu salam, they all lived this same life, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the forward thinking of Ibrahim السلام, is what, brothers and sisters, we have to make sure we have in our lives. We cannot become complacent in the state that we're in. We can't suffice with what we're doing right now and just say, Alhamdulillah, I'm good, I have everything. But I need to think about what's going to happen in the future. I have to be dedicated to what I'm doing now and how that's going to have implications on myself and my family as days come. This forward thinking has to be firmly rooted in our day in and day out psychology. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqeen. Guide us to the straight path. We're on a journey, brothers and sisters. And if we're not on a path that is rightly rooted in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, then what are we doing? Are we using our energy in that which is correct? Are we forward thinking and investing ourselves in things that are going to reap reward whether in this life or the next because if we're not then we need to reallocate reattune our lives to things that are really going to bring fruits and as Ibrahim السلام, lived his life we can't think that even such a man a Nabi a, a prophet Khalilullah we can't think with our forward thinking we can't think with committing ourselves and our devotion to this path, submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that things are going to be easy. We have to inherently know that this journey is full of difficulties. And we have to know that with these difficulties is where I will be able to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Is where I will be able to earn what I want in the next life. Because none of us will be able to enter Jannah without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are forward thinking, we just need to aslim, submit and devote ourselves to it. And be openly, willingly submission, submissive to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our way. For the young brothers and sisters, we're looking for a job, can't find one. Aslam to li rabbil alameen. Put in the work. Try to find that job. Put your resume out. Exhaust your means. 
But at the end of the day, we have to know that Allah is Rabbul Alameen. For our older brothers and sisters, raising children, or perhaps young adults, raising children, they're wreaking havoc, they're difficult, they're exhausting us. Asna. Put in the work. You haven't been putting in the work? Recommit yourself. It's never too late. Perhaps we will redirect and right the boat that perhaps we didn't have in our lives. Perhaps through our actions, we will set our future generations like Ibrahim alayhi salam aright and fix the things that perhaps our, our generation or our parents didn't know that they should have done. We have to submit and say, Aslam to Rabbil Alameen. I submit to the Lord of Worlds. No matter what comes our way, wives when your husband's out or wives when your husband's not right, give him advice. Husbands, when things are difficult and you're having problems, Aslam to Rabbil Alameen. When you want to get married, Aslam to Rabbil Alameen. This has to be our psychology, brothers and sisters. And this psychology can't stay here. It can't be only in our minds. It has to be a lived, experiential psychology that endues everything that we do. That everything that we do is a state of submission and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we going to do? Are we going to listen to khutab and reminders and lectures day in and day out? Do we read the Qur'an every single day? And at least 17 times a day, say, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ When are we going to take the initiative to truly be upon the righteous path? When are we going to take and put into our lives to live a life of hidayah that is fueled and enlightened and driven by Allah and Allah alone? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us to reorient our lives to be focused on Him, and may our lives be fueled by the barakah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where we live in a way that is like him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa alaikum ni sallam muslimi wa astaghfiru wa atubu ilayhi Alhamdulillahi wahda والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد. Brothers and sisters, as I've said time and time again, life is a marathon and not a sprint. Life is a journey through which while we're living, we're living. Sometimes we will be correct and we'll do what's right, and sometimes we won't. But throughout that journey, in accepting that it is a journey. Even when we are not doing what's right, we have an opportunity at our hands. We have an opportunity to right what we're doing and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even through repentance, and even through trying to right the ship, that is ibadah, and that is truly submitting to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we are deficient as human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that perhaps I am forgetful, and that perhaps I am negligent or heedless, to what he has commanded me to. But if I have the wherewithal to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he has blessed me with a mindfulness of repentance and a mindfulness of him, then in that state, we are truly being submissive. And so we can't become pessimistic. We can't give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't think that perhaps I have too much going on. I have too many sins. I'm so evil or so bad as a person that there's no hope for me. Hasha. A'udhu billah. Never, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our condition. And this is why inherently built into our religion 17 times a day at the minimum, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us guidance in our path. To make our journey a journey that's fueled by that which is pleasing to Him. So what can we do? How can we live a life like this? If I want to make a small change today, to live a life striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to have a status of ihsan, where I'm just orienting myself around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are some small tangible things that I can do to be like Ibrahim alayhi salam? That when things are good, I can use this as a catalyst for doing more, and when things are bad, I can reorient and recalibrate myself. One, 
I can go back to the basics. I can just go back to the five pillars, the basics of my religion, and focus on mastering those. We all have said sometime in our life, whether we're reverts, converts, or we're born into this faith, we all say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. But in this testimony of faith, we understand that inherently as human beings, we are deficient. We understand that there's a higher power that is watching and, and all aware of everything that we do, think, feel. And so with that, we can reaffirm ourselves and commit to La ilaha illallah. But also we can commit to the second part of the shahada Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can recommit ourselves to living a life like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Full of adab, full of good character. When we don't have the best character, we repent, we take note of it, and we try to have better character. Full of love, trying to want for our brothers that which we want for ourselves. Full of service, trying to give up ourselves to do what's right for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. And taking what I have now and reorienting all of that into adab, love, and service. How I deal with my family, my job in and of itself, how I deal with my clients, my co-workers, adab, love, and service. So recommitting just to the shahada alone can start to reorient ourselves to strive in the path and live a path that is truly guided by la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Then our prayers. Recommitting to making our prayers more than just something that I have to tick off and do every single day. Focusing, even if it's just on the Fatiha, so that I can theologically orient myself to prepare everything to Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqeem. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise due to Lord of the Worlds. The same thing that Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Aslam to li Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman al Rahim. The most gracious, the most merciful. Thinking about what I have and what I should be doing. Maliki Yawm al-Din. The owner of the Day of Judgment. And I am going to be held accountable for what I'm doing. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. It is you whom we worship and for who, whose aid we seek. That entire first part of the Fatiha, we can look at it almost as a preface. Calibrating it, or even in the Fatiha alone, we're preparing ourselves to be in a, theor, a spiritual and theological state of submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him for guidance. So if there's one thing that I can do, I can just go back to the basics and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that good. Perhaps some of us will say, I got that. I'm doing that. I have mastered my salah. I'm like the companions where birds can perch on my head while I'm praying and they'll never move. I believe there's people here today that perhaps have that level of khushur when they pray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us like them. But we can master that. We can make that better. And then commit ourselves to living like that in the other things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not even saying add anything extra. How we deal with our families. How we deal with our children. How we deal with our co-workers. Do I have road rage when I'm rushing to make it on time to the Jum'ah? All of this, we can reorient ourselves to live a life of submission and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that we can do is make sure that we are devoted in this path. A path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and check our adab, check our love, and check our service. Make sure that we have impeccable character. This was how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are upon immense, magnificent character. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam excuse me, was sent to us for, to teach us how to live a prophetic life that is guided by good adab. As we've mentioned before, that doesn't mean being meek. That doesn't mean you just turn the other cheek. Theologically, as Muslims, we don't have that. 
But that means that I'm doing what is best and most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe that means sometimes I will have to get out of my character and stand up to a bully. Stand up for justice. Maybe that means sometimes I will have to lower my ego and submit to my child who's going to give me advice. Who is lower than, on, than me on the social economic plane. No matter which extreme it is, it all has to be rooted in a prophetic etiquette that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can live lives of love, wanting for our brothers and sisters that which we want for ourselves. We can live lives that are truly striving to be full of happiness and joy for everyone in society. And that that fuels a life of service. Because the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a mercy to all of mankind. If we are true followers of our beloved Prophet, is this the service that we're having with other people in society? Are we a mercy to mankind or are we a burden? A'udhu Billah. Are we a mercy to mankind or are we a hindrance? Are we a mercy to mankind or are we just in the way? We have to ask ourselves, am I merely just a cog in a larger machine? Or have I oriented my intention to be a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a servant to everyone else? As the Prophet sallallahu he said, Sayyidul Qawm, the master of the people, the best of people, is that the one who is best to others. In another narration, Khair al Qawm, the best of people, Khadimuhum, the servant of amongst them. So we have to make sure we're living lives of service. And in our service, it's fueled by the two previous things we said. It's full of adab and it's full of love. And the last and final thing that we can deduce and extract from the story of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, is that we have to be forward thinking. We have to get out of the mindset of merely doing things ad hoc. And I'm speaking from my own self person form. We have to remove ourselves from that. But we have to live a life of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also plan for the future. What, is, what am I doing today and how will it better my family? What am I doing today? How will it better myself? <coughs> Excuse me. What am I doing today and how will it earn me the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I die? Because that is a reality. And as earlier this week, we prayed janazah. On an 84-year-old mother, at the same time we prayed janazah on a 9-year-old young girl, none of us knows when we're going to die. And so we have the capability. We have the reminders built into our religion. Are we going to take hold? Are we going to reorient ourselves from today, from right now, and commit ourselves as Ibrahim did and say, Aslam to Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us a people of submission and devotion to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us on our journey throughout our lives to that which is pleasing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our lives with happiness and joy in the good times and in the bad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to never let us be heedless to the fact that He is Rabbil Alameen. To never let us be forgetful to the fact that He is in control of all things. Ya Allah, remove our anxieties, remove our depressions, and fill it with your love and your joy and your mercy, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem. We ask you, Ya Allah, to make us a people of impeccable manners and character. We ask you, Ya Allah, perfect our character, perfect our shortcomings, and make our character like that of your beloved Prophet wasallam. We ask you, Ya Allah, to make our service sincerely for your sake and your sake alone. Never let us be deluded by our own selves. Never let us be hindered by our own shortcomings. Uh, ya Allah, it is only through you that we will be able to achieve anything. So orient our lives around you. Make our service sincere for you alone. And guide us to be people that are like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And like Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam as Khalilullah. Ya Allah, allow all of us to reach this high status and this high station. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.